Director of Religious Life and Community Services at Dickinson College. Uh, so my time is much, much shorter than I thought. Um, so it, it might seem a little weird getting into what we're going to do, but just deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> I work with college students, so this is how we speak all the time. <laughs> Between two and four is the time every afternoon that either I need chocolate or I really need to be engaged by someone, otherwise I'm falling asleep at work. And some of you look like that's very accurate in your lives, too. <laughs> so, um, I don't have chocolate. I don't eat it all. Where's the candy? Um, yeah. So, I have two little paper airplanes, because I was listening and multitasking earlier. Um, and whoever gets it, you have to open it and then be ready to read the scripture. If you don't have a Bible, find one. Ooh, I didn't say it would work. Okay, okay we'll try this one further back. <laughs> I normally throw harder things, but there you go. Okay, so my first, if you guys can just prepare, we'll get to you at some point. Um, my first question for you. What are some spiritual gifts that you have? I talked about them this morning. You wrote a whole list of them. What are some spiritual gifts that you have that either people have told you you have, and you're not so sure, but others swear you have them, or spiritual gifts that you know you have? This will go much faster if you interact with Leadership. Go ahead. Leadership, wisdom, and worship. Leadership, wisdom, and worship. I heard a leadership from the back. Leadership and prophecy. Some other ones. Yeah. Listening. Listening. Great. Others. Administration. Evangelizing. Evangelizing. Some others. Yeah. Compassion. Compassion. Teaching. Teaching, okay? Empathy. Empathy, which goes along with compassion sometimes. Any others that we haven't hit? Exhortation. Exhortation. Can you tell us what that is? Um, encouragement. Encouragement? Yeah. Okay. Encouragement, telling others about your faith. I think sometimes in the church, um, I was sitting in the back having kind of a side conversation as I was listening. Um, and sometimes in the I know I did it. But sometimes in the church we use words that we don't know what they mean. So if I do that, please stop me. But like exhortation is a big church word. And I don't know about you, but I won't hear that in my college. So if there's words that people use, stop us and ask. I know one word I've heard here this morning that I wanted to make sure you guys knew is discipline. Do you guys know what the discipline is? Yeah, the book of discipline. Who can tell us what that is? Because that's a word we've kind of thrown around a little bit. Or we reference. And it's if you're not in the church world behind the church scenes, if you come to worship on Sunday mornings, you probably don't hear much about the Book of Discipline. Go ahead, Ian. Book well, of Discipline is kind of like the uh, United Methodist Church Handbook. Great. So it's a handbook of rules and how to do things, and it gives lots of guidance. And so when we reference that, that tells us um, and gives us guidelines how to be United Methodist. Okay, so we talked, one thing I want to think about is a leader. And what is a leader? What are some characteristics of a leader? A lot of you have leadership as a spiritual gift. A leader is a servant. A servant. Great. What else? A listener. Compassionate. What else? Humble. Humble. Mm -hmm. Innovative. Innovative. Strong-willed. Strong-willed. Say a little more about that for me. Like, that kind of goes along with, like, perseverance and determination, like, wanting to get the job done. Okay. So willing to kind of see some things through. As you're thinking about a call to ministry, one of the most important pieces of being called to ministry is being a leader. That's going to have lots of different faces. It's going to look very different for each of us. But thinking about how do you lead? Because it's really hard to lead in a church if no one's willing to follow you. You're all called to be a leader. Whether your leadership is all about compassion and about working with people in crisis, which you'd be amazed in the college setting 
how much of my ministry is working with people in crisis. It's a piece of this church and in my churchy world that I didn't think would actually transfer. And this past year, we've worked with, last semester, we had at least 10 suicide attempts. And so I get to work with people in crisis in a way that in the church I didn't think would transfer as well as it has. Um, we also get to work with people in service and working in our communities, right? And reaching out, whether it's helping at soup kitchens or whether it's reaching into disaster relief, whether it's in our area with flooding or whether it's throughout the nation or many of you in fellowship throughout the world. Um, what, is the, what are some of the hardest parts about being a leader? About being a leader and who you are today, what's hard about it? The risk that you may fail. The risk that you may fail. Let people know. Yeah. As a leader, it's really hard to sometimes take the, take that step beyond where we're comfortable. What else is hard? Yeah. The fear that you're going to lead in the wrong direction. Okay. So fear that you might go and lead others even in the wrong direction. Yeah. Something goes wrong, it's on your shoulders. <laughs> yeah. If something goes wrong, it's on my shoulders. That can be scary. Yeah, I like it. Uh, I guess, like, having patience with everyone who's following you. <laughs> <laughs> having patience with people that are following you. Sometimes as leaders, we think, well, the answer is obviously over here. That's where we should go. And sometimes we don't have patience to listen as well as we should. Yeah. Admitting when you're wrong. Admitting when you're wrong. How many of us as leaders have trouble and struggle with admitting you know what? That was just a wrong decision. <laughs> Elijah keeps smiling and more reasons come to his mind. <laughs> oh no, like I was just agreeing that I do like have trouble admitting when I'm wrong, like in arguments. Like with my mom, when I'm arguing with my mom, and midway through the argument I realize I'm totally wrong and she's right. And I don't want to admit that so she's arguing. How many of us have been there, right? Well, part of a leader is being able to say, you know what, I was wrong. And it's going to happen. And being a leader in ministry also is being humble and taking those steps to say, you know what? I was wrong. But together we can listen to God and figure out what's right. And what's that right step. Um, Who has the passage from Philippians 1, 18? Can you read it for us? What then, notwithstanding, every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached. And I therein do rejoice. Yeah, and will rejoice. I mean, the reason I want us to listen, I'm going to ask you to read it one more time, is to think about how is a leader, and this comes from Philippians, how is a leader, it's central that you are grounded in Christ. So often when we think about a call to ministry, we think about all these leadership skills which are important. But if we don't take that time to ground ourselves in Christ, everything else kind of gets lost. One more time. What's that? Notwithstanding, every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I dare and do rejoice, yeah, and will rejoice. One of the most important things about thinking about how you are a leader today and will be in the future is how you preach Christ. How do you, what are some examples of ways that you've shown your friends Christ? Or maybe your churches? Or maybe your school? Evan? Hospitality. Tell me a little more. Uh, well, um, I live in Bloomsburg, so there was a flood that had happened, and it devastated the entire community, and everybody was affected by it, and the community and our church, we had opened up, and we, we uh, provided lunch for uh, the flood victims for two months, I think it was. So showing Christ for hospitality, through, you know, in the time of need, opening up and saying, look, we're here to help those that are helping others. What are some other ways you've shown, shown people Christ? Taking an interest in the new kids on the track team. Okay, so taking an interest in new kids on the track team. And how does that show others Christ? It just shows them that, you know, I, I love them as much as I love anyone else on the team. It doesn't matter if they're new or if they're, they've been there for three years and I've known them for a while. Like, I'm going to treat them like I treat anyone else. They don't deserve to be treated like crap. <laughs> okay, so showing others that they matter. Others, how, how do you show people Christ? When someone shows you like anger and hatred, you have to show them the love of Christ uh, because they need it the most. Okay. 
So sometimes showing love instead of anger and hatred, which is easy to return sometimes, but not necessarily the thing Christ would want us to return. How about two more examples? How, do you, how have you shown your friends Christ? Yeah, being, being happy no matter what. Like, I was recently told, like, by my church family, actually, that they love being around me because no matter, like, how early it is, if I'm serving breakfast or something, I'm always in a good mood. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so always being positive and being in a good mood and being happy that you're there. We all know when you go to church if someone doesn't want to be there, right? <laughs> We've all probably been that person some morning. <laughs> But what a difference it makes when you show up and you're happy to be at church. You're happy to be going to youth group. You're happy to be doing a service project. Versus if you show up with the attitude, I don't really want to be here. I'm going to let everyone else know that I feel that way. I've been there. Um, Part of being a leader and going into ministry is thinking about how do I proclaim Christ. I work on a college campus where probably half of the people see me as Mira the administrator more than see me as Mira the pastor. But it provides me so many opportunities to show Christ. Whether it's sitting down and listening to a student who called over winter break and we talked for two hours about their gender and their homosexuality and their struggle with it all. Or whether it's having that late night conversation with a friend that really wants to talk when you really have to get that reading done, you still haven't started. There's lots of ways that we need to be able to show Christ because for our community and our friends, that's where it starts. That's where they're able to say, wow, you are a minister to me one-on-one, not just in front of the congregation. Mm-hmm. We're going to read Philippians. We're going to read from uh, Philippians 3, 4, 12 to 14. And what I want you to think about is proclaiming Christ. And how, as a leader, it's sometimes a challenge to proclaim Christ. Go for it. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on. That I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended but one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Yeah. I, 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 I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God and keeping Christ Jesus. This talks about how we have to press on. How we have to keep pushing it towards the goal of getting to know Christ more and more. What I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to pass around your handprints from this morning. Uh, ladies are in one pile, guys are in another. So if you can find yours, that's a bad pile, sorry. And um, grab that. And then as we're doing that, I'm going to hand out um, a song sheet to you. We're going to read through this song. Um, so I want you to hear the words. Sometimes when we sing it, we try to think, am I singing good? Am I not singing good? Um, so what I'm going to ask you to do is, if you have the verse, I'm going to ask you to read it. And then when we get to the chorus, I want us to say it together. Okay? So we'll start with verse 1. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry. All who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I, who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am. Here I am, Lord. This is I, Lord. I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. I, the Lord of snow and rain, I have borne my people's pain. I have wept for love of them. They turn away. I will break the hearts of stone. Give them hearts for love alone. I will speak my word to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. This is I, I, Lord. I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you will lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. I, the Lord of wind and flame, I will tend the poor and lame. I will set a feast for them. My hand will save. Finest bread I will provide. 
till their hearts be satisfied. I will give my life to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Here is I, Lord. I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. I'm going to ask you to do now that you have your handprints. The handprints are over the way to say, Here I am, Lord. Take a few moments between you and God and write down, if God were to say to you, Kyle, I am the Lord and I want you to do ministry here. Where is that here? As, as Bob hands in the pen. Where, where is here? So if God was to say to you, Elijah or Emma, Adam or Ashley, Montana or Aaron, Mark or Evan, here is where I'm calling you to ministry. Where is that? Know that today it might be one thing and tomorrow it might change. And that's okay. But the first step is taking that time to be with God and say, God, this is what I'm hearing from you today. So I'm going to give you three or so minutes. I know, it's short, sorry. Um, but take some time with God. And if you, were, if you were to literally take your hand to God and say, God, I am here. Where do you want me to go? What would that be? Go for it. So my call story, I was in Haiti when I was a sophomore in high school, or a sophomore in college. And I went to Haiti because I thought it would be a really great way to get away from my parents over winter break. <laughs> I didn't want to spend that five weeks at home. I know some of you can probably relate. So I went to Haiti with a group in my home church. Um, and while I was in Haiti, I was walking around and working at an orphanage for handicapped kids. And in Haiti, if you are handicapped, the society believes that the devil has come into you, and that is why you have some type of inability. And because of that, the entire community would shun you. The orphanage that we were working at was an orphanage called Wings of Hope. And people from all over the country would literally do whatever they could to drop off their children in the city of Port-au-Prince so that people would find this child, because nobody wanted this child. Wings of Hope was a ministry that would then pick them up and care for them the best they could. While I was working there and loving these kids who I definitely didn't speak their language, um, and who were outcasts from their society, I felt God say to me, I want you to do ministry. And I want you to help, help young people have an opportunity to love others that aren't like them whether they're outcasts for one reason or another, whether it's here in the States or abroad, I want you to work with a church because the church is a place that's supposed to love everyone. And we don't always do a good job at that. It wasn't something I was expected to come back from Haiti saying. And it wasn't something that when I got right back from Haiti, I was ready to tell everyone. Some of the things you probably wrote down in your paper are things that you might feel in your heart and you're not ready to say today. And I want to tell you that that's okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay to take the first step in writing it down, and then the next step in maybe a week or two weeks, or maybe it's going to take a year, is to figure out that next step to tell somebody that you trust to talk about it. Because for me, it took almost a year till I told someone about that call from God. Looking back now, it's easy to say, oh yeah, God called me while I was in Haiti. But when I was in college, that was a whole other fear to tell my family, God wants me to go into ministry. Because they had never thought that's where I was going to end up. I was supposed to end up being an accountant. Because I like numbers, and it would work. But now, when I think about what makes me happy and what I care about, working with people to love others is the thing that I can't imagine not doing. So for you, what are some of the things that you wrote if you were to say to God, here I am, use me? Where is God calling you? If you're willing and ready to share, we're going to give you an opportunity to. Yeah. 
like serving children like in like medically and ministering to children in third world countries. Okay. So some type of missions and with medical and children. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. So. I want to do like inner city stuff. <coughs> so I put down homeless, prisoners, drug addicts, prostitutes, mm-hmm. depressed, poor, scared, hopeless, lonely. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so so a lot of people that um, need the love of the church mm-hmm. but may not come to the church doors on Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What about others? Exactly where I am right now. Okay. What's that mean? Exactly where I am. Right <laughs> okay. So and you that, So you know this um, is where God wants you now. And that's all I know. But there's a piece about that, right? Yeah. A piece knowing this is where God is using me today. Others, where is God calling you? Yeah. Um, healing those who are outcasts in the church. Bringing them back in. Okay. So reaching to, out to others who are either used to be in the church or no longer are. Like vulnerable youth or the gay and lesbian community and things like that. What I want to affirm is what the song says. Here I am, Lord. Mm. It's going to be one of the hardest things to say to God. Here I am. Let me listen openly. Let me go where you want. But it's one of the things that when you're able to do it, It releases everything else. And you feel at peace. And you know, deep within your heart, that this is right. Maybe that's a place you can imagine today. Maybe it's a place you wrote down on your paper. Maybe it's a place that's still to be revealed. I don't know where I'm going to be five years from today. And I'm okay with that. Because I know that where I thought I'd be five years ago is not where I am today. But there's a peace because I know God has it figured out. I need to be willing and open to say, okay, I'll go there. But I have the trust and the faith that God says, this is where I want you. God has a reason. Mm 